Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Denise Bontoli. I am an astroparticle physicist working at the Department of Physical and Chemical Sciences of the University of L'Aquila. So today I'm very happy that uh, we have uh, Thomas Berghofer and Lia Lang, who have accepted our invitation uh, to talk at the Thursday morning science uh, seminar um, about gender equality in physics uh, and other uh, basic, uh, basic research fields. Um, so this uh, webinar comes after the Department of uh, Physical and Chemical Sciences has entered uh, the Genera Network, which is what uh, um, our uh, guests uh, will uh, talk uh, to us about today. And they will explain also how the institution uh, which participate to this uh, network uh, can contribute um, to, uh, to do the first thing that I think we, should, we all should do when we are facing with, uh, with issues, that is uh, raising the awareness uh, uh, of a problem. So um, let me uh, just uh, introduce uh, them. Um, um, let me read it, read their uh, CV. So Thomas has studied physics and astrophysics and got his PhD in Munich. He then moved to Garchen, Berkeley and Hamburg Observatory. And at, at DESI Hamburg, he then became a program manager for the federal funding of astroparticle physics and has been engaged in several international cooperation in research, technology and gender equality. He coordinated the EU funded GENERA project and he is currently involved in the coordination of the GENERA network, which has been founded in 2018. Um, Lia Lang studied in Munich, uh, Stockholm and Berlin and holds a master's degree in gender studies from the hum uh, Humboldt University. She worked uh, as a project manager in the overall coordination team in the uh, GENERA project and she, she is involved uh, in the Horizon 2020 project uh, Act on Gender as facilitator of the GENERA network community and she leads uh, the working group on career development. Uh, she is based uh, in Desi uh, Zoyten. So um, I kindly ask you uh, at, the, at the end or at any time you want to ask uh, questions to use the chat on the Microsoft Teams or um, the chat on the YouTube so that we can uh, at the end uh, ask the, the directly to the speakers uh, to reply to our uh, questions and uh, mm, at the end we will also ask you to switch on your cameras uh, to uh, to see and to, to show how many uh, we are and then I let uh, the, the speakers uh, uh, start uh, uh, sharing their screen uh, the, their slides and uh, I'm sure we will enjoy uh, the, the seminar thank you Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for inviting us over and it's a great pleasure to give this seminar on gender equality. And um, it is, of course, uh, a must do to present this presentation as a best in class example. So as a mixed team, so it's, it's me, Thomas and Leah, and we will switch back and forth and I must make sure that Leah has the last word in this presentation, not me as a male, as it often is the case in, in the other seminars or uh, whatever to come together. So, Leah, you want to say hi? Yeah, I already said hello in the chat. So, hello, everyone. Um, good, to, good to have you with us. Um, it's a new experience for us to give this talk and be recorded at the very same time. So, bear with us. And uh, yeah, I hope we can um, keep you with us and I hope we can provide you with some insights about the work we really love to do. So uh, Thomas will start and then I'll take over and yeah, use the chat, write down your questions and then we can discuss afterwards and make this as interactive as possible. Right. Thank you. Okay, let's start with the presentation. So the topic of today is uh, gender equality in uh, physics and other fields. Um, we have, so next slide is coming or not? Here, uh, this is the menu of today. We will uh, 
introduced to you gender equality and uh, what's the matter with it, uh, and then provided the status in physics and other fields and basic research, mainly uh, STEM fields, but it's also the uh, same uh, in, in biology and life sciences, etc. And uh, then uh, topics number three and four are uh, um, projects or networking that we have initiated and done. And uh, we will show you some, uh, or we picked out some interesting topics uh, which you we want to provide to you and uh, have you uh, yeah, starting thinking about it and uh, show you why it's important that we do something together in Europe on this uh, issue. And uh, topic five is then uh, summarize and give some conclusions to you. All right, uh, gender equality. Here's a picture of the famous Solvay conference of 1927. So if you look at the the people that are in this picture, they are all famous scientists uh, from 1927 and it's very obvious that gender equality is not an issue at that time. So, um, of course, you see very uh, many males and there's only one female, uh, it is uh, Marie Curie. Have you ever thought what happens if you ask yourself a uh, name, uh, a famous uh, scientist? I think most of the people, or it has been studied some, some time ago, most people will say Albert Einstein. But uh, on the other hand, uh, Marie Curie has also got two Nobel Prizes, so uh, it's really amazing that more tend to, to name a, a male uh, scientist uh, as, than a female scientist. So, this is almost a uh, hundred years ago, and uh, since that time a lot of things have happened. So, for example, the United Nations have uh, put um, gender equality as one of the sustainable development goals, for example. So it is here number five, uh, among uh, many other important things you, you find in these uh, graphics here. So, and also in Europe, it, it matters a lot. So um, in defining the European research area, uh, the European Commission has uh, defined priorities and you see that gender equality and gender mainstreaming in research is one of these uh, priorities uh, set for uh, the European research area. And that's also the reason why uh, Europe provides funding, especially for this topic and uh, that uh, yeah, researchers themselves can do something towards gender equality. So, uh, we had a project, Gender uh, Genera uh, project, which was active in physics, and it was rather interesting to see. We uh, derived the status by uh, checking for scientific publications on this issue, and uh, the conclusions are uh, all together in, in these few sentences that I, I show you here, and it explains you the complete uh, picture. So the cause of the gender inequality in physics and in science in general is a complex issue and cannot be based on a single factor. Yeah, that's clear. In a growing number of analyses of impediments to female scientific career, it has been demonstrated that gender imbalance in science results from interplay of many institutional, social, cultural, and individual factors. Yeah. Of course, they include but are not limited to gender stereotypes, and implicit biases, traditional image of an ideal scientist connected with the masculine nature of science, gendered understandings about appropriate and natural male and female interests introduced at the early age and continuing throughout adolescence and adulthood, unfavorable academic climate for female scientists, sex segregation of occupations, social norms of burdening women with excessive family responsibility for childcare, elderly care and household management, demands of full work devotion within academia and STEM in particular, covered uh, discrimination in the form of old boys networks, biased hiring, practices, unfair distribution of resources, cultural perceptions of femininity and masculinity, bullying, harassment, as uh, career preference and lifestyle choices. So, wow, 
this is uh, quite uh, an issue if you want to do something on this issue. So and the question how is how to change when you see this uh, list of things that uh, are all going wrong, <laughs> so to speak. Um, it is, has been uh, about uh, 20 years ago when Lambda Schiebinger uh, yeah, came up with the idea that uh, this is a threefold uh, project to, to go for gender equality in science. So she said first fix the numbers by improving the numbers of women in STEM. So that I think we all know that uh, our institutions uh, try to, uh, or they, they have some activities going on to, to raise awareness for science in schools, uh, to, to improve the numbers of students later on and so on. Then the um, second point is fix the cultures or the institutions by improving the way we interact. I will come back to this point in a minute. Or third, fix the subject or the research and the curricula for teaching and learning. And uh, so the, in the following, uh, we will provide you with some ideas how we tackled uh, topic number two within the Genera project. And then uh, later we'll show you uh, some ideas how one can tackle uh, fixing the subject uh, of the research. So which we got started with in Genera network. Right, this is the original idea. So the status in physics and other fields and basic research. So there, there is a long-term monitoring going on by the Re European Commission, the so-called she figures, where uh, lots of numbers are compiled over the years. So from the she figures 2018, uh, I would like to cite the following statements. Women make up less than 50% of doctoral students, doctoral graduates and academic staff. In the top academic grade, in particular, women are a clear minority and the position since 2013 has improved only slightly. So it is already a change compared to the, the picture I showed you at the beginning of the survey conference. But here is another statement. The share of women is considerably smaller in science, technology, engineering, mathematics than over all pooled fields of R&D across the career paths. So uh, it seems there's a long way to go to really reach gender equality when you read this in year 2018. Right, here's a picture of what is going on. Uh, a picture or so-called scissor diagram where you uh, uh, put down uh, the numbers of males and females in certain uh, stages of the career. So you see it's going from the bachelor and master domain over the doctoral phase, the PhD up to the professor or director level, the highest level, and you see uh, the further you come in the career, the less is the numbers of females uh, in the system. So, and it completely goes down at the highest level. And this has not changed much, you see, uh, two different uh, times compared in this diagram. So, uh, slowly moving, but uh, perhaps not fast, fast enough. Here's the same picture for just the STEM fields. And here is already the starting, uh, quite obviously different. You see that uh, women uh, are starting in the, the range of, let's say, 30% uh, in the students uh, on the students level, and uh, then it breaks down to half of it uh, when it comes to the director level. So it, it's not a scissor diagram. These uh, two curves of male and female do not um, yeah, um, cross each other. So it's well separated here. All right, so my first part is over and I will hand over to, to Leah that she will continue the presentation. Thank you, Thomas. So um, now I have the pleasure to give you some insights of the Genera network about what we're actually doing. And um, in this network, as Denise mentioned, also your university, your Department of Physics is included. Um, before I start talking about the, the Genera network, I would like to look back with you and give you a very brief history 
um, how it actually all started. And in like 2014, there was a consortia out of astroparticle physics institutions. And they realized, hey, we hardly have any women on board. And we don't know why, but we would like to change it. And we want to do it together. So they successfully um, won um, money from the European Commission and they set up the Genera project I will introduce to you right now. So Thomas, um, if you could provide me with the next slide. Yes. So um, this consortia won uh, money to support research organizations to implement so-called gender equality plans. And I'm not sure how familiar, how familiar you are with this term. So gender equality plan is a strategic instrument uh, institutions can use. So first of all, you look at the current state of, of gender equality issues at your institution. And for instance, you, um, um, you measure the numbers of men and women on different career levels. And then you define the targets where you would like to be in a specific amount of time. And then you set the measures how to get from the current status to your target. And this is all included in a gender equality plan. And the aim of this project and the money is to support physics uh, institutions to design, to implement, and also to monitor those so-called gender equality plans. Three years. We have three years, three million euros, 11 institutions, um, and it ended in August 2018. And the overall frame or the overall um, unique selling point, if you would like to call it like this, was that, is, that it is from physics for physics, because there are a lot of projects like this out all over in the academic world, but we really wanted to make sure we, we do it within one discipline um, and after the three years I mean you you cannot change a quite masculine research culture within three years so we really wanted to continue and this is why we created the Genera Network but before I would like to give you some insights on the achievements we gained so next slide please well, of course, I could I could talk for hours. I mean, we had three years in 20 countries. I don't know how many trips we made to different places. It was quite an adventure. But I tried to structure it um, on four different levels. So on the left side, you see the numbers of gender equality plans um, above. And on the right side above, you see the tools. Then I, um, I'd like to talk about the reports and the events. So... Um, we managed to have four new gender equality plans in place um, and three updated ones. Um, and just to, to give you an idea, for instance, we had Poland on board. And um, in this country, um, you don't even have a gender equality office or um, some kind of support structure we, for instance, have in Germany or, or in Italy. So it was really our partners from Poland managed to implement the first gender equality plan ever. And in a, quite a such chilly political circumstances, we, we even needed security stuff to protect one, uh, one event from us, right? So I think it was quite an achievement. Um, um, so this is on, on the gender equality plans. And then we managed to set up several tools to support uh, research organizations who have little knowledge on gender equality, what they can actually do. I will speak about this in a minute. We conducted several reports and studies. We are happy to provide you the links. We don't have the time to go into crazy detail. But for instance, to just give you some insights about a study on the gender dimension physics, it was a quality study. We conducted about 90 interviews with physicists. And it was so interesting. We asked them about the working environment in physics and how it is for them on a gender perspective. And we've basically learned that the career path in physics, they're more and more scattered, right? They're more and more precarious, so to speak. You need a lot more flexibility. You have to be quite mobile um, in terms of moving from one country to the other, which also affects, you know, combining maybe care responsibility and your family with your research. And we've also learned that physicists really, really love their job. So they also... Um, yeah, they put a lot of effort and emphasis on it and trying to um, adjust with the sometimes um, challenging circumstances. 
Yeah, and also um, we had events all over Europe and we had one in Italy, in Rome, where our partners from CNR, I, I'm sure you know them, or some of you might know them, they ask schools to send in a video on women in physics. And, and they got more than 130 videos from all over Italy. And then they, they created a committee and trying to, you know, find a winner. And then they invited the schools to a huge, to a huge event. And I, I can't remember the last time where I've been in one, on one conference with so many young pupils on board and students. So that was, yeah, that was um, quite amazing. So just some insights about achievements. And next slide, please. I would love to shortly also speak about the tools. So on the right-hand side, you can see some colorful dots. We call them the so-called fields of actions. So first, we wanted to make sure what do we actually talk about when we talk about gender equality? Is it only about um, combining research and family, or is it also about the visibility of minorities and of women in, in, in STEM or in physics? Isn't it also about engaging leadership and also in, including um, gender and diversity issues when you teach or when you do research? So this really helped us to broaden the term of gender equality to not only look at the numbers. And then we conducted um, a toolbox, is what you can see in the middle below, there's this table with more than 100 measures from physics institutions. So we really wanted to know what are you actually doing, right? Um, and also we created a so-called roadmap because, you know, we we got money from the European Commission to set up gender equality plans. So we um, made, made a roadmap to tell them what step needs to do in order to reach it. Um, and we still use it and it's especially useful for new organizations. Um, and then we also um, collect annual data from physics institutions. You can see a small plot. No, we are not allowed to publish them. So this is why it's really small. I'm sorry. Um, well, we wanted to get the numbers um, from the involved physics institutions every year on different career levels and compare them. And it was really interesting to also um, see the differences among Europe. So in Romania, for instance, you have a much higher number of female students and PhDs um, compared to Germany, for instance. So there are quite some huge differences in terms of the numbers in Europe um, when you look at different countries. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay, so just some insights for you. And you might have realized that our network is really focused on organizations, so to support organizations um, in gender equality issues. So now we are talking to you as, as researchers. It's a quite different perspective, but anyhow, we, we hope that you, um, yeah, that you also um, get, get, can get something out of it and realize that it's an important issue for your organization to support gender equality. So here is now the Genera Network. So out of this Genera project, we created a Genera network because, of course, you can't solve the problem of gender equality within three years. We need more time. It's a long-term issue. So we managed to start with five institutions. And now, as you can see, we have 32 members, um, universities, research institutions, research, research organizations. And we also have so-called friends of Genera. Uh, <laughs> you might wonder. What does what does it mean? It basically means they would love to join the network, but they are not able to provide those annual data we need. So we also wanted to have them as friends. So we are quite well spread all over you all over Europe as well as Israel and in Italy. As you can see on the right side, we also have CNR on board. I already mentioned them, ENFN, and then you <laughs> as GSSI. No, we have GSSI. Uni Roma and your and your and your university. Mm -hmm. So next slide, please. Yeah. So what do we do with all those institutions? You can imagine it's quite a huge group, quite well spread. Um, 
First of all, we have online meetings, and this is something you can, as a researcher, join anytime. So we speak about different topics, and basically the need for those topics, they come from the members. So we had a meeting on um, how to deal with harassment, sexual harassment, um, how to... Yeah, how to deal with biases and funding system and recruitment. So um, basically we have, yeah, we had 50 meetings so far every time on different topics. Mm, and we basically share the expertise we have among us because as you can see, we're quite a huge group. So this is how we, um, how we spread new knowledge. And then also we have face-to-face -face meetings twice a year. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, in those COVID times, we can meet again soon, maybe even one day in Grand Sasse. And we organize ourselves in working groups. This, yeah, 70 people, you need to somehow organize yourself. We have one on the data collection and analysis, because as you know, I mean, we all love data. We all want to know how it looks like. So we have one on data collection and analysis. We have a working group on strategy and vision within the network, and we're already working on new proposals to make sure that we can continue with the work over the next years. We have one on dissemination, um, who, for instance, published that we're giving a talk right now to you guys. And we have one on career development. Denise is also part of it, and gender dimension. And I'd love to talk to you about the last... Um, two working groups in the next slide. Thank you, Thomas. Okay. The one on the gender dimension in physics. Well, um, I would like to invite you for a moment to change the perspective. So, of course, electrons and planets, they have no gender and no sex. But if you shift the perspective to the objective, from the objective to the one who's actually doing the research, of course, there's a person, right? And this person has, has a gender and is male or female or whatever. And this also shapes what interests you have. This also shapes what metaphors you use when explaining and when teaching. And this person also decides what examples you use, what pictures you use in uh, physics teaching books, for instance, where you have mainly, yeah, m male male people, right? Pictures from male ones when uh, when you explain something. Mm. And also, this person decides what to disseminate. So um, this working group is led by Professor Thomas Brage from the University of Lund, and we're trying to really somehow. Um, enter new spaces of research. So we look at the numbers of men and women in physics, how we even go beyond with this working group on gender dimension. So we look into the content itself of physics um, and review, investigate, and produce knowledge about the gender dimension. And I'm so excited about it um, and see what we can find in there. Um, just to show that um, physics is not a neutral discipline where gender has no has no effect. I mean, just looking at the number, you realize there must be some gender bias inside. So this is uh, really, yeah, so to speak, groundbreaking and very new. <laughs> Probably you've never heard about it. Um, but I'm excited that within the Genera network, we we take on this um, adventure, and it's well led by Professor Thomas Bragge. Next slide, please. And then we also have a working group on career development and I'm leading it, so sorry, why I get excited. Um, and the aim of this working group is really to do something for early career researcher, because we realize that um, pursuing a career in physics, um, it's, or in, in STEM in general, it's quite challenging. And we would like to include gender and diversity issues also when making career choices. And we are designing a one-day workshop to um, inform you about the different career paths you can make, about the skills you need or whatever career path you would like to follow. And also to deal with um, issues like uh, harassment, sexual harassment, gender biases, um, how to combine research and uh, family. And it's been, yeah, it's, we started last year and we 
just had a meeting yesterday, right, Denise? And I think it's going really well and hope we can have our first workshop pilot at the end of the year. So maybe one day also at your institution, we can offer a workshop for you as when you're a PhD student and you would like to um, go deeper in career issues. Um, yes, and here you can see the expected outcome and the current state of this working group. Um, next slide, please. Yes. Just to sum up, so I, I know it's a bit abstract what we are doing because we really, we work mainly with institutions, but as you can see, we also want to work with uh, the target group more directly, for instance, with this um, working group on career development. And um, yeah, so when, when you want to get engaged, let, let us know. Um, and as you know, you can also always follow our online meetings and um, yeah, you can let Denise or others know when you would like to do something. Okay, so here you can see the Genera Network Management Team. So it's us in Israel, <laughs> we went to a conference, you can see Thomas and uh, myself, and then we also have Maital Iran Yona from the Weizmann Institute. She's the chair of the, of the Genera Network, and you can also see Francesca Primus, astronomer from ASO. And this network is led by physicists as well as social scientists, which is an adventure itself, but so far it has been um, quite some fun and joy and we are all learning a lot from each other. And yes, this was a sweet uh, short insight into the Genera network based on the Genera project. And I will hand over back to Thomas to wrap up. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, uh, yeah, so my task is now to, uh, yeah, provide you with a summary and some conclusions of uh, today's uh, seminar. Um, right. So, I think we have made clear that uh, the number of women in the uh, in uh, physics and other STEM fields uh, increased over the last decades. However, the underrepresentation is, is still imminent in the system. Uh, and this is uh, <laughs> my interpretation. If uh, we do nothing or address gender equality like we did in the last time, or the last uh, decades, then we may reach gender equality in about a century. So this is, of course, not fast enough. And um, we showed you that uh, we try to do something out of the community or out of a, a, a number of institutions. And uh, so the first activities were to come together and uh, implement gender equality plans, which is in fact a, a number of gender equality measures with some, some around it. And uh, the idea um, is that uh, these uh, gender equality plans shall help institutions to change. Um, we, of course, uh, understood that uh, it's important uh, to measure and uh, physicists uh, for, uh, like very much taking data and also for measuring the effect of measures it is important to take data and uh, see if they show an Im uh, effect. Um, but it's of course clear that it takes a long breath uh, to um, really see uh, an effect of uh, something. So we learned in the project that uh, we need to establish a long-term monitoring. And so we did in the Genera uh, network. Uh, wait a second, yeah, should keep here. So. Uh, this brought us into the uh, domain of this networking, um, but uh, the monitoring itself uh, does not uh, keep us together. We have to, to address, or it was clear, we have to address uh, several issues together and we discussed among ourselves what is important. And it was uh, found out that uh, the young people are important. Uh, they should... Uh, be, uh, 
yeah, brought together with uh, what is going on when it comes to gender in, in science, that they, when they are in the leading position later on as a group leader or a director, that they remember that gender equality matters. So that's why we are addressing uh, gender equality also uh, in developing a career um, a module for young researchers. And uh, a new topic is gender dimension in research. And if you think a while about it, uh, of course, we have the idea that uh, we can do something by legal um, matters and say gender equality is in our constitutions or it has been defined as a priority or whatever. But if it comes out of the field by itself, by uh, uh, gender perspective in the, the research we are doing, it, it may provide the best argument for gender equality. And this is why we are tracing this uh, a bit more esoteric look, looking like a topic. It is not esoteric, it's uh, real, but we have to say why it's real. And that's uh, why we are together in Genera Network. So um, if you want to get closer to Genera Network, then here is a list of uh, contact possibilities or uh, channels where you can follow what's going on. I mean, for institutions, it's uh, very interesting because they can join in and um, become a member and uh, yeah, learn what's going on or contribute or define the scope of this uh, work. Uh, so we are not doing anything that nobody's interested in. We are defining our scope by ourselves. So when an institution comes in, it has the chance to, to shape everything that we're uh, tracing together. So, yeah. Thomas, <laughs> may, may I just add um, on top of what institutions could do, what we as individuals can do in everyday life? For the last slide. So, um, yeah, we can also close the presentation. We also wanted to add with a, with a more like practical um, suggestions what you could do in your daily life to support gender equality as a researcher. And I really think the small things matter. So, for instance, if you observe or some kind of harassment or sexual harassment support the person of or if you experienced it ask for help so um don't blame yourself it's never your fault so um yeah if you observe or experience some kind of harassment ask for help or right now in those COVID times combining um research and family and care responsibility is such a challenge we haven't faced it before and it really shows that we are not of course, we are scientists and we love what we do, but we also have a family and private life and we need to somehow combine it. So um, if there are any ways, support your colleagues with care responsibility in those times. And also I would like to add that, of course, it's not only challenging um, for women um, in STEM or physics, it's in general like challenging for minorities. So if you like, if you're a black or a gay man or um, a lesbian or um, a trans person, whatever kind of uh, minority you are, it's of course challenging in the field. So again, um, you know, find find people who can support you, gather together. So um, yeah, we can all together create a more diverse and inclusive research culture. This is what I would like, want, what we wanted to end with. <laughs> so thank you very much. I think you're still there. After 40 minutes, <laughs> yeah, thank we you. are. Or, <laughs> of course, and thank you very much, uh, Leah and Thomas. Uh, it was a very nice introduction to, to the network, but also um, it was uh, very nice to, to hear and to stress that, of course, uh, small things uh, matter and we can actually, uh, every, every one of us can contribute to, uh, to this. So um, I would like to, to start, uh, if, you, if you want, um, uh, reading some questions that um, I see now in the chat, uh, so that uh, we hope uh, we can have more information. So, um, so first question is about uh, um, other, if there are other examples of virtuous institutions 
with regards to gender balance in physics and how did they do it? What can we learn from them? Yeah, thank you. I, I read the question in the chat. Yeah. So, I mean, there are many, many um, great ideas. The one I like, for instance, was that one institution set up a 120% grant. So um, that means that the researchers who had some care responsibility or basically the, one of the group leaders got, got pregnant during this time. And those months, the group leader was upset, could be added after it. Mm -hmm. um, and it really helped the researcher and uh, the research team to finish the work. Um, and the money was already planned in the very beginning. It was saved before. So I think those little things really help to um, also support um, young group leaders and young scientists, both men and women who would like to, um, yeah, who become parents. Mm -hmm. This is one yeah. small example. And in this, I guess, it is also very important to have a, a vision uh, well in advance uh, of what can happen, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to save the money for this. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And it was so successful, I mean, also for the institution itself, because um, they made sure that the excellent scientists also stay and come back. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So another question is about, uh, um, uh, so is Genera project also aiming in future to deal uh, with other equality issues like race, religion, or do you think it's not relevant in science? Ah, this is a very good question. <laughs> um, we would like to, or it, uh, yeah, politics uh, is following a certain agenda, and this includes in in the future also diversity and inclusion issues, and uh, that all addresses uh, what uh, comes out by this question. Um, yeah, we should do, we shall do, uh, but on the other hand, uh, we shall not uh, forget the gender equality. So it's it's not like a burnt down field or <laughs> gender equality and then you move over to the next field and uh, you, you uh, do something on race or religion. Um, so I think all difficulties or hurdles uh, we experience in gender equality will all pop up again when we address diversity uh, uh, issues. So we can learn a lot and uh, for me it's, uh, it can only go together, equality and diversity and inclusion. So yeah, we are planning on uh, yeah, writing a proposal that uh, goes exactly in this direction and uh, addressing this all together. Yeah. So basically, this can, I mean, uh, what Francesco was asking, uh, I guess everything can take advantage. Uh, so yeah. from what has been or what has been studied or is going to be, it is studied at the moment uh, within the, the, the network, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and the physics community or the STEM community so international, the collaborations. So, I mean, you can't address gender issues without taking into account uh, other kinds of um, um, diversity aspects. So, yes, um, it's so important. So, we have another very, very interesting question. Um, so, what advice do you have for women undergraduates uh, as that seems to be the main point where the percentage of women in STEM subjects uh, falls? <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Um, I can only say keep on going. <laughs> it's uh, do what you like uh, and uh, don't let other people uh, decide on your uh, career or so and um, and uh, try to to stay together and uh, individuals as an individual is always difficult to when you face problems uh, related to uh, gender to stand it but uh, together it may be possible and um, of course, you um, 
as an undergraduate, you cannot change the world. Uh, that's clear. You're facing the system. You can change the world as soon as you are in a leading position. <laughs> But uh, in case you need really help, support, because maybe of harassment, etc., then please uh, get uh, in contact with uh, support uh, structures in your institute. Often they have anonymous uh, uh, ways of uh, you know, reporting harassment, etc., and make use of it. Uh, don't hesitate. Uh, can I add something? <laughs> so, yeah, great question. So maybe don't take things too personally, knowing that the system itself um, is quite harsh against minorities. And our research has shown that it helps to have a good network and mentors on your side, both men and women, to remind you about your brands. I mean, you're already there, so you must be better than... Uh, many others already. So yeah, don't take things too personally and um, um, connect and yeah, be well connected to networks. So thanks, next one. Um, so Ilaria, first of all, she is saying uh, thank you. It was a really interesting talk and she's asking how many men support a gender project in Europe? Are there any meetings where men themselves uh, expose the importance of female colleagues uh, in science? Do you know the He for She initiative, Hilaria? So there, there is, I think that's a great initiative. It's not, um, it's not academic focus only, but there are some great initiatives um, where men, um, of, of course, support women. And if I may say this, I mean, this whole gender equality issue, of course, it benefits women, but it benefits everyone. So it's really not about doing women a favor or something. You don't need to make us a favor, but it's like it's for the benefit of all to, you know, to get excellent research and to make sure that we reduce the biases and only um, support men, but to make sure we have excellent research. So it's really about the benefit of everyone so yes it's of course it's important to have men to speak out for female colleagues but if they do so they know it's because it's better for everyone yeah there are not enough men uh, going for gender equality i mean most of the men don't uh, even think about it so uh, 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 so myself, uh, I, I am. Uh, I got concerned with gender equality many, many years ago when my my uh, boss came into my office and said, "Oh, Thomas, uh, starting tomorrow, you are a female representative." <laughs> this was in the end of the 1990s, and I said, "Are you crazy?" And um, but uh, I started thinking about it and was uh, searching for information. And uh, after a while, I, I said, I got to do it uh, because we had no female in our um, institute, which uh, was allowed to be a female representative. So I served as the female representative <laughs> for uh, several years. So I, this was my uh, uh, yeah, way of getting into this topic. Uh, but, uh, of course, it uh, always reminds me on this old weather report uh, song, it's raining man. It's not raining man. <laughs> so let it rain. <laughs> Somehow make, yeah, shake your colleagues and say, hey, <laughs> gender equality also matters uh, you. Uh, so <laughs> that, That's really important, I think, yeah. Um, so the next question is uh, um, uh, about... Uh, uh, where to read uh, or where to find information about gender inequality in science. So, Joanna is asking if uh, there are any books or articles you would suggest. Yeah, I, there's this great book. I was just trying to find it while, uh, while being online with you. Maybe I can send it to Denise. I think there's great material out there, really. And I all, also on different kinds of styles. I'm not sure if you know uh, Liv Strömquist. She's an artist um, from, 
from the Nordic country and she basically paints and cartoons points into history of, of women and science. So on, on very different level, I think there's they're great materials and I'm happy to um, maybe send it to Denise and she could provide it to you. So um, yeah, endless, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and then, but I can provide you with my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah thanks. So um, another question is related to the, uh, the fact that among us, there are also uh, chemists and uh, biologists uh, or biotechs. So how is the situation in these fields? And if it is, uh, why do you think it is different, if it is different? Mm -hmm. Oh, a very good question, good point. Uh, I mean, we were very much focused on physics, what we presented today, uh, but uh, while we were having this uh, uh, EU-funded projects, uh, a couple of sister projects uh, were tackling gender equality in uh, neighboring fields like uh, life sciences and uh, other fields or marine science, etc. And to me, it looks like uh, the, the problems or burdens are pretty similar in uh, it's, it's in, in basic research. Um, the um, starting conditions when you look at the numbers are mm -hmm. different. Uh, for example, in biology you have uh, many more female students uh, than male students uh, mm -hmm. entering the university system. But then uh, all these processes at work that bring down the numbers of uh, females, I think they, they are universal or more extreme in, in biology than in, in physics. Uh, here the starting conditions are maybe 30% uh, female phys physics students uh, compared to 70% uh, female students in uh, biology. And, uh, but chemistry somewhere in the middle between biology and uh, physics. Uh, physics uh, is then uh, pretty similar to, to computer science and these engineering fields. So, yeah, but uh, when you look at the highest level, uh, most females are gone, <laughs> are lost <laughs> by what uh, some people call it the leaky pipeline. So it's like a big pipeline from students level to, to highest level and uh, over the time it looks like an old house in the garden with many holes and <laughs> so water is tripping out everywhere and uh, the, the person who is trying to flower the, the, the plants uh, to, to, to uh, water the flat, uh, plants uh, get, get no water at the end. So, hmm, yeah. That's the situation, but uh, the exchange with, uh, with other colleagues uh, working on these issues and in other fields, uh, it shows that uh, they are trying to uh, tackle the same problems mm -hmm. and uh, difficulties and yeah. So I guess understanding why uh, there are these, also these differences for example, at the beginning, it is quite complicated. I mean, one should probably go back to the high school and understand uh, I mean, also what is the situation of the, of the people who um, then start uh, uh, the university. So I, I guess this is a very, I mean, we would need probably another seminar or maybe another project also, yeah. yeah. I, I, I should add, uh, I mean, the goal is not to make everybody a physicist. I mean, not everybody likes physics. Other people like uh, biology and, uh, of course, you want to have a colorful uh, research uh, going on. And uh, so everybody should decide on its own, uh, whether physics or mathematics or whatever is, uh, is right. Uh, so the goal of gender equality is not to, to uh, change <laughs> this, yeah. of course not. It, it, it's really that uh, people uh, can uh, reach, uh, can do what they want and reach on the level they, um, able, they are able to reach. They are not blocked by other 
issues uh, than being excellent and uh, really dedicated to what they are doing. So, I don't know if you are ready for the next question. So, I'll take over. <laughs> Fabiana is asking, how important do you think encouraging companies to offer free childcare could be in encouraging women to pursue uh, both a career in science and a family? And how viable do you think this is for most companies? So, yes, I think it's important for uh, companies to offer free childcare for both men and women. So to make this issue not only a female issue because it's not, especially um, the care responsibility. And I've been working at the Fraunhofer Research Institute before and we did studies in companies and it showed that they offered it, but it was not used mm -hmm. because there's a culture that somehow doesn't allow you to use it. <laughs> because it's judged. So as a company, yes, offer it, but then also make sure that, I don't know, the highest boss is using it and that the highest boss brings his or her child also into the office every now and then and to show that it's okay to use it and that it's fine. Um, yes, so I think it's important, but not only offering, also create a culture where yeah. you're allowed to use it. So offering also role models to the other people and giving the example that one can do it. I mean, also men yes. can, can do that, of course. Yes. So, and uh, I think next we have a suggestion. So Professor Tati uh, is suggesting to read the book uh, Why Men Don't Listen and Women Can't Read Maps. <laughs> How to support, uh, the differences in the, may, in the way men and women think to understand the gender differences. So, it is always, of course, uh, uh, yeah. good to to know more about this. So yeah, there are, of course. I mean, scientific articles are more like uh, pop culture <laughs> articles, yeah. but it's good. Yeah, mm. still, it's good that we we talk about that. Um, we have then next question by Katerina. Um, who is asking how can a scientist collaborate to the Genera project? <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, again, a good question. Um, usually, um, one can join uh, as an institute, but of course, uh, an institute, what's an institute without people and uh, scientists? It's um, just a concrete structure. <laughs> and um, uh, at the end, uh, what we are doing together is made by the people that get connected to this network. So uh, what scientists can do is uh, either uh, the institution is already part of uh, Genera, then it's, it's very easy. Uh, you are already in and can just uh, join the meetings, etc. or give me a, a hint that I should put you on the, the mailing list. If uh, your institution is not already participating, then uh, you can also get in contact with us and, and say, or and connect your institute to, to the network. And uh, then we can start um, the procedure to, to bring this, to attach this institution to the network. And then you can... Uh, participate in the network as a person representing the institution. Thanks. So next question is about social networks and other means of communication, uh, such as television, if they can be used to support this project. In my opinion, gender equality, such as race and religion, is so important that it deserves such great attention. Yes, uh, in principle, I, I totally agree. Uh, but uh, concerning the media, we have to be careful. Uh, it's uh, there are sometimes um, trends you can find in the news that uh, if um, some journalists think it's enough gender, uh, that they write some articles against it. So, um, <laughs> so it's. Going back and forth, uh, so whenever there is some progress, <laughs> then you have forces who like to uh, turn the wheel back. And uh, so um, 
And it's also a, a matter of prejudices. So what are, and here we really have to be careful what is really a fact or a, a data and what is just a prejudice. And uh, so, um, and the social media, the, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's like, like uh, this or that. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, but uh, I think we, we need more time to discuss than just saying yes or no or black or white. It's, um, yeah. And here I s have some, or it's my personal problem with social <laughs> media on networks. Well, we do have a Twitter account, so we are on Twitter. We write blog articles. Um, I mean, it's just nice to be connected with everyone on Twitter because so much quicker than the news. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we are online. But as you as you can see, there's also an issue of like generation and uh, you know what to use. And in our network, we have senior researcher and very early career researcher. So I think it's good to address all kinds of target groups and use all kinds of channels. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, another question, I guess it should be more or less last because we took a lot of time. Uh, so um, Marco is uh, saying uh, that there are always people who say, uh, well, why should women have a special treatment? What would you tell those people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my experience is that uh, female research researchers hate uh, when uh, the, somebody's trying to provide a special treatment for them. But um, this uh, special treatment is often hidden and this works against the females. So that, um, we must be careful what we mean by special treatment. It makes sense because uh, um, the only female can give birth to, to children and the phase where the, uh, this happens or family building and the special extra obligations are on the shoulders of the women are exactly in the phase where you usually uh, are in the most important phase of your career where you make the step maybe from uh, PhD to postdoc and where you become a, an independent researcher and here um, we should make clear that the chances for male and female stay the same. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, um, I cannot directly compare, for example, the publication re record of uh, males and female when the female uh, gave birth to two children in this time. Uh, it's impossible that uh, she can keep the record as high as uh, the male uh, in, in this situation. So here we need compensations or uh, this must be realized by the system that uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the female re researcher gets kicked out of the system because uh, she has two or three publications less. Or, and, and there, of course, a special treatment <laughs> is important. But this is, I think this is well understood and it needs to be established in the system that uh, we have these compensations. And, but it can also be true that the male is uh, raising the kids and uh, is they're not performing like uh, without kids. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, this must be taken into account. Sure. And if I may add, I mean, if you look at the numbers of female professors, I mean, men still don't need to be afraid, you know. They still own almost 90% of all the positions, first of all. And second, as I said before, gender equality is not doing a favor for women. It's really about creating excellent uh, research cultures. So this is what it's all about and not a favor or special treatment for anyone. So... Um, so before uh, just saying thank you so much, I would like to um, ask uh, uh, the people who want to uh, just to switch on their cameras, just to say uh, goodbye and to, to show our faces. Um, if, so uh, everyone 
to like wow. <laughs> and, um, so that we can show that we are real really <laughs> listening it was uh, really nice to to listen to to your uh, uh, talk and uh, we I, i'm sure that we um, we can start from from this uh, to to have some awareness of uh, what is uh, the problem and uh, also to to be positive in in, uh, in thinking that uh, we can all do something and uh, uh, why not contributing to this network or to other initiatives uh, in the same uh, direction um, so I guess uh, this is all and thank you so much I think we can keep in touch or I think uh, uh, if anybody wants to send uh, um, information or ask uh, Leah or Thomas uh, other questions, I think they, uh, you can use their email address uh, to communicate uh, with them. And uh, so thank you so much. I just leave the, the, the stage to Marco who wanted to announce uh, the next uh, webinar next week. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, thank you, Thomas and Leah. Again, it was a really, really excellent talk. And I'm sure everyone needed it. Um, so uh, really, really thank you. And it was very well attended. We we're 71 people, and uh, plus the ones who will see it on YouTube. And uh, so yeah, very good job. Thank you. So I uh, just want to leave you with, uh, with this announcement for next week. So uh, next week we also have a live webinar that will be broadcasted on uh, Univac website and it will be uh, about uh, COVID-19. So it will be uh, Professor uh, Nicola Petrosillo from the Lazzaro Spallanzani Institute. He was the leader of the task force for the Ebola outbreak in, I think it was 2013. Uh, so it's a, it's a big shot. He's a very good, uh, very good researcher, uh, great scientist. And he, he uh, the title is SARS-CoV-2 Transmission Routes, Persistence and Criteria for Cessation of Isolation. So. Make sure you're here next week, same time, and um, let's be with the Professor Pedro Silo next week on the TMS. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you next week. Ciao. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> Thomas. Ciao.